Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. At 23.15 on March 11, 2025, in the number 9 warehouse of the Port of Houston, Mike, the purchasing director of Texas Instruments, held a tactical flashlight, and his bulletproof vest was soaked with cold sweat. Customs data showed that a batch of industrial robot controllers labeled, assembled in Mexico, actually contained 3,028,000 nanometer chips from China's SMIC. At this time, his satellite phone suddenly rang, and the roar of the White House chief of staff came. The president wants to know why the Pentagon's missile system also uses Chinese chips. At the same time, in a wafer factory in Suzhou Industrial Park, 42-year-old process engineer Wang Haiyan was staring at the production line monitoring screen. She didn't know that the automotive power management chip developed by her team had quietly infiltrated the Ford F-150 pickup production line, and Washington's tariff butcher knife was hanging over her head. Back in the spring of 2023, on the third underground floor of Huaqiangbi, Shenzhen, Lao Zhu, a former Huawei engineer, used a laser pen to scan the domestic substitution chip, but the customs declaration form was clearly marked as electronic components for toys. His account book records this magical reality, these power chips, which cost 87 cents each are sold at a sky-high price of $23 in the U.S. military supply chain after being OE-med by Vietnam. In the winter of 2024, in the lobbying company secret room on K Street in Washington, Intel lobbyist Thompson slapped a stack of documents on the table. The cost of China's mature processed chips is 58% of ours, and you still want to increase taxes. Page 17 of the document reveals The Chinese chips in General Electric's medical CT machine have caused the cost of domestic alternatives in the United States to soar by 420%. The coffee cup of the senator's assistant left anxious circular water stains on the table. In February 2025, the gears of fate began to bite the U.S. Department of Commerce was forced to admit that 67% of industrial equipment and 48% of consumer electronics products in the United States are equipped with Chinese mature process chips, and this figure has soared to 81% in the automotive field. This chip war without gunpowder is quietly rewriting the underlying code of the global manufacturing industry. Capacity Blitzkrieg, the shift schedule of SMIC's Shakesing factory, is shocking. In order to take up 38% of the world's 28 nanometer production capacity, workers work in three shifts, resulting in a 19% surge in the average monthly failure rate of lithography machines. But no one dares to shut down because the 4,200 power chips produced per hour by each production line are being equipped with Tesla's Shanghai Superfactories Model Y. Secret Tricks Wang Haiyan's confidential mailbox contains a cross-border roadmap. After Chinese automotive chips are re-exported through Penang, Malaysia, the export unit price has skyrocketed by three times but it is still 41% cheaper than American products. Even more magical is that a Chinese logistics company has established a chip washing base covering an area of 170,000 square meters in Tijuana, Mexico, and uses Bitcoin for settlement. Dimensionality reduction strike of technical standards the test report leaked by the U.S. UL Certification Agency shows that Yangtze Memory's industrial control chips have been running continuously for 2,400 hours without failure at a high temperature of 85 degrees Celsius, 
and their lifespan exceeds that of similar products of Texas Instruments by 32%. All this stems from the TSMC 28 nanometers process manual brought by a Taiwanese engineer three years ago. Bloody defection in the capital market. Morgan Stanley's report on March 10 admitted misjudgment. China's mature process equipment procurement increased by 53% year-on-year, and North Huachuang's etching machine won 65% of Global Foundry's orders. Even more shocking is that SMIC's 28 nanometers yield has reached 99.2%, and the cost per chip is $5.80 lower than Global Foundry's. Bloody migration in the talent war. LinkedIn data shows that 427 American semiconductor engineers will switch to China in 2024, of which 39 will carry 14 nanometers fin FET process secrets. An anonymous engineer wrote on Reddit, at Hefi Changshan, my annual salary is enough to buy three school district houses in Palo Alto. At 6.30 on March 12, Wang Haiyan's production line jumped out of the 180,000th chip of the day. At the same time, a notice from the Ministry of Commerce popped up on her phone. If the United States insists on raising tariffs, China will restrict the export of rare earth and photovoltaic-grade polysilicon. In Detroit, Ford CEO Jim Farley was shouting at the supply cut warning report, ban Chinese chips. Then our pickup truck production line can only sell sandwiches instead. This war has long gone beyond the scope of technology. When American farmers discovered that the Chinese chips in John Deere harvesters are more durable than diesel engines, and when the second-stage rocket controller of SpaceX Starship was dismantled to remove the PAL module of neutrino technology, Silicon Valley's technological hegemony is experiencing the most absurd collapse. As a Pentagon confidential document leaked from a dark web said, we are not fighting against Chinese companies, but against the survival will of 1.4 billion people who exchange genes for lithography machines. However, in an underground factory in Dongguan, workers are laser engraving the Made in Mexico label on Yangtze Memories chips. The factory director sneered with a cigarette in his mouth, when the Americans find out, their Statue of Liberty will have Chinese chips in its base.